Please welcome Stacy Cunningham. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at the New York Stock Exchange, and I love my job. But I want to tell you a story first about how a woman I never met changed my life, and a story about a girl whose message has the power to change many lives. But first, I need to tell you a, a few things about the New York Stock Exchange. So our history dates back over 225 years, back to the earliest days of the United States. George Washington was sworn in right at the corner of Wall and Broad, with the where the exchange stands, to exchange stands today. He named Alexander Hamilton the first Secretary of Treasury, and Hamilton went on to hatch a plan for our financial markets. Just a few yards down the street, 24 brokers met underneath a tree in 1792, and they signed what was known as the Buttonwood Agreement, and that really formalized their trading and founded the New York Stock Exchange. For over two centuries, we've had a front row seat as our capital markets have matured and powered our growing economy. It's, it's been, uh, the, the capital markets have created a framework that allow dreamers to find investors, allowing them to scale their products and services so that they're available to the masses and not just the few with means. We take great pride in, in being part of that role. The New York Stock Exchange, we know we play a small role, but we're very, very proud of it. Where we're slightly less proud is that all 24 of those original brokers were men. And worse, it took 175 years for the first woman to become a member of the New York Stock Exchange. Muriel Siebert didn't have an easy path, but she was ambitious, and it was fantastic. She, when she was faced with obstacles, she put her head down. She was quoted as saying, I put my head down in charge. That was her, that was her DNA. So she fought for it, and ultimately she prevailed. And it was December 28, 1967, when the ratio of men to women, members of the New York Stock Exchange, became 1,365 to one. <laughs> Mur <laughs> Mickey, as she was known, she also didn't have a ladies' room uh, on the floor where the members' lounge was. Uh, and so, finally, they converted a phone booth in into a bathroom for, for Muriel Siebert. And right next door to the palatial men's room with the couches and attendants was, was phone booth number five. I started my career on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange almost 25 years ago, and it never occurred to me for a moment that perhaps that wasn't an opportunity available to me as a woman. I, I didn't think about it. And, and that's in large part because Muriel had already done that, that work. You know, I still had a phone booth to deal with, but I, I didn't wonder whether or not I belonged. Muriel Siebert may not may or may not have been thinking about anyone else at the time, but any time you embrace ambition and you redraw the boundaries, you're not just redefining them for yourself, you're redefining them for everyone that follows, and I thank her for that. In my current role, I get to welcome CEOs to the New York Stock Exchange regularly, and they're almost always men. In fact, only 6% of the Fortune 500 companies have a woman CEO. Why? You know, one of the reasons is this persistent, often unconscious bias against women asking for feedback or promotions or jobs. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a societal view that women should play a certain role, and it's only just starting to change, as, as we're hearing about today. But there's another reason. It, women often limit themselves. And that brings me to the next story I want to tell you. Last week, it was announced that Fearless Girl would be moving outside the New York Stock Exchange. On the, yes, <laughs> on the eve of International Women's Day last year, State Street put a statue of a little girl across from Charging Bull in Lower Manhattan. Fearless Girl carries a message of the importance of diversity in corporate, on corporate boards and in senior leadership roles. But she says so much more than that. While she's currently staring down that bull, Fearless Girl and Charging Bull are kindred spirits. They are both symbols of strength and, and of fearless resilience. They're messages to each and every one of us, men and women, to dig down deep inside to that place where you're not scared, where, you're not, where you don't care about what anyone else has to say, so you can find that spirit to fight for progress. You'd be glad to know that now there is a proper women's room in place of that phone booth, but it's only been there for just about 10 years. 
progress is far too slow. We need to take action and move faster. And in the words of Mickey Siebert, I think we should all put our heads down and charge. Thank you. <laughs>